Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hello everyone, welcome back. So, today we will discuss on carbonylation reaction. In the last class we were discussing the hydrogenation reactions, right. Today we will we'll basically try to introduce carbon monoxide into the organic molecule. How can one introduce the molecule, the car carbon monoxide into the molecule and therefore uh, the carbon count can go up by 1. So, there are uh, traditionally uh, as you can see carbonylation method can be of a uh, few different type. One is uh, Monsanto acetic acid, another could be hydroformylation and uh, of course, hydrocarboxylation and so on. So, first we would like to discuss the Monsanto acetic acid process and that involves incorporation of carbon monoxide into the molecule as you may know. So, Monsanto acetic acid process. Monsanto acetic acid process is the conversion of methanol plus carbon monoxide into corresponding acetic acid, right. Now, uh, traditionally or historically rhodium catalyst has been used, but industrially nowadays iridium catalyst is used. You need also uh, HI catalytic amount and that reaction temperature is 180 degree centigrade. Now, this reaction is quite interesting and it is done in industrial scale as you can see. This is the industrial synthesis of acetic acid that we get. Now, the starting material is methanol and carbon monoxide. How one can convert these two molecules into, into the acetic acid molecule? Also, one thing to be noted that rhodium or iridium catalyst can be used for this mechanism for both of these catalysts are exactly set and most importantly you need catalytic amount of hydrohydric acid that is HI. Let us try to look at the mechanism of these, uh, this reaction as you will see whatever fundamental type of reaction we have discussed it will come into play and it will demonstrate that these organometallic reactions are nothing but governed or dominated by the fundamental reaction that we have mainly discussed for this course, ok. Uh, Let us look at the mechanism. Of course, the first step of the mechanism is uh, conversion of methanol to, uh, to methyl iodide with the help of HI, right. So, you convert methyl iodide plus water, methanol is converted to me uh, methyl iodide and water. This is uh, you know something you must remember without that the catalytic cycle cannot start. So, methyl iodide formation is absolutely crucial. Now, from there on of course, um, a catalytic cycle will start off where rhodium will uh, come into the picture. So, that is rhodium CO dicarbonyl species that is the catalyst let us say is used. It is a 16 electron species and the methyl iodide that we have just converted will participate into the reaction and undergo oxidative addition, right. So, methyl iodide oxidative addition will give you the carbon uh, metal bond, carbon rhodium bond in this case, carbon monoxide and I 3 minus. You started with 2 iodide uh, and then you have one more iodide. So, that makes it I 3 minus. This is an 18 electron species. From there on, you can undergo alpha migratory insertion that is what we have studied. We have studied this oxidative addition, we have studied oxidative addition, we have studied also um, this, um, this alpha migratory insertion. That means that uh, where you will see that alkyl group will migrate into CO that we have discussed again previously. So, you will get acyl equivalent formation with a metal component being there. So, one carbon monoxide is less now. So, that carbon monoxide has uh, has been incorporated into this acyl component and you have I 3 minus, right. Now, this is the alpha migratory insertion. So, alkyl group has migrated to one of the carbon monoxide to form the acyl group. Now, from there on 
we we have this species 16 electron right uh, if you count so alpha migratory so oxidative addi addition gives you 16 to 18 electron 18 electron to 16 electron for alpha migratory insertion further you have now the carbon monoxide is interacting with the metal complex and therefore so these reactions are done under the carbon monoxide atmosphere as we have discussed in the very first instance now we will have this two of the carbon monoxide as you can imagine one more carbon monoxide gets in gives you the 18 electron species so 16 to 18 18 to 16 16 to back to 18 electron species and you have of course i3 minus from there on reductive elimination will give you the CH3COI. So, that is coming from, so this acyl unit and one of these unit iodo will reductively eliminate and therefore, you will get, get the acyl iodide. So, what we have seen in this particular species, it is it's basically dancing between 16, 18, 16 electron species and 18 electron species. Starting with the 16 electron species, we have uh, seen the oxidative addition that gives you the 18 electron species. Now, that 18 electron species can give you again the 16 electron species where alpha migratory insertion is going on. After that, you see 16 electron species again co comes back to 18 electron species when carbon monoxide is interacting or coordinating with the rhodium center. Therefore, uh, you get again back, back to the dicarbonyl species. Next, what is left to do is the reductive elimination as we, we have seen that um, one of the iodide and the acyl unit CH3CO unit reductively eliminate to give you CH3COI. So, essentially we have seen oxidative addition, alpha migratory insertion, ligand coordination that ligand is here carbon monoxide coordination and the reductive elimination. All these fundamental steps we have discussed earlier during the during this course. Okay. So, as you see all the organometallic reactions the mechanism becomes very very simple and it is like the simplest you can perhaps imagine as you have some understanding of, of the fundamental steps. Without the fundamental steps this understanding can be problematic therefore, you know the major activity or major focus of this course as you as you have seen has been the discussion of the fundamentals of organometallic chemistry or the steps and uh, therefore, in organometallic chemistry almost any mechanism you can explain by these fundamental steps. Okay. Uh, moving on from the uh, CH3COI of course, you have um, this, uh, this um, acyl iodide CH3COI uh, from there on you, you will see that the hydrolysis. Okay. CH3COI uh, hydrolysis that is the last step of the reaction can give you the acetic acid right. So, this is CH3 sorry, and um, acetic acid and hydroiodic acid back. So, hydrolysis of this unit gives you acetic acid and HI back. Since it is a producing HI as you have seen in the very first instant that HI is used as the catalytic amount. Okay. So, your catalytic cycle will carry forward with with uh, with little bit or tiny amount of uh, hydroiodic acid. So, the turnover limiting step for for this uh, reaction would be uh, turnover limiting step would be the one where your uh, rhodium and methyl iodide is both involved. So, that means the oxidative addition is the rate determining step. Uh, and therefore, you have the first order dependence with methyl iodide, first order dependence with the rhodium catalyst. So, the first step, very first step is the rate determining step, that is the slowest step. If you do the reaction with uh, either with rhodium or iridium, both of them gives you the exactly same reaction mechanism. That means, the first step is the rate determining step where oxidative addition into the methyl iodide is going on. At the beginning, you have seen the methanol conversion into methyl iodide and they, they over there you do not have involvement of too much of involvement of an organometallic intermediate. But once you form the methyl iodide then you can uh, take into take that one into the catalytic cycle where it interacts with the metal center to give you the oxidative addition and that is turned out to be the rate determining step. Okay. 
Now we will move on to the next topic that is uh, hydroformylation. It is uh, of course the basic understanding will be similar to that of the just uh, discussed reaction of uh, the acetic acid process, but we need to briefly look at that and appreciate the steps of, of this transformation. Okay. So, we are going to discuss the hydroformylation reaction. Hydroformylation, okay, as the name says it all. Uh, what we, we have in our hand is the conversion of olefin in presence of mixture of hydrogen and CO and this is like 200 atmosphere pressure usually industrially used and you have a cobalt catalyst tetracarbonyl species, hydrido cobalt hydrido tetracarbonyl species and you have the possibility of forming two products, okay, uh, where the famous or most common uh, this uh, linear product again one of the carbonyl and this hydride hydrogen two of the hydrogen as you can uh, hydride you can see or the hydrogen atom equivalent you can see carbonyl and hydrogen is getting into the olefin okay starting from olefin you are going to get this product so this is the olefin backbone and hydride hydride and co is getting into it so this is the linear product it usually for this reaction for this particular reaction it is four equivalent and the other branch product. So, instead this aldehyde fragment can incorporate over here. So, that means you will have uh, this you know COH and this H here of course, you have again two hyd hydrogen uh, atom and one carbonyl equivalent. So, this is again your the uh, propene equivalent from over there you have seen that aldehyde is getting into the into into the branch position or giving rise to the branch product. So, this is so called the branch product starting from alkene you have the possibility of forming two products that means linear and the branch product. Okay. So, it is a hydrogen and CO mixture known as also syngas. Now, this is the mixture reacting with the olefin to give you either terminal aldehyde or the branched aldehyde. What all you have introduced into the olefin is carbon monoxide and hydrogen uh, or H2 equivalent like two hydrogen atom or you can say the two hydride equivalent you have introduced. That total unit that aldehyde unit that is getting generated if it is on a linear fashion that is the linear product and if that aldehyde is on the branch fashion or on the side that is the branch product and usually we see a 4 to 1 ratio which is equivalent to roughly 1 kcal per mole energy difference uh, for, for this linear is to branch product. So, getting selectively one of these product completely selectively one of these product is going to be challenging we will we'll discuss more, uh, but instead of the propene let us say if you have styrene then the scenario can be completely different because the, um, the metal alkyl species that is getting generated can be stabilized or the negative charge at the benzylic position will be st stabilized and therefore, you may have the possibility of getting the branch product as a major product, but for the al uh, uh, long chain olefin or aliphatic olefin you will usually get the linear product as the major product. Okay. Let us look into the mechanism of these reactions hydroformylation. So, mechanism of the hydroformylation reactions. Okay. So, what you start with is uh, tetracarbonyl uh, hydrido cobalt species, okay, HCO, CO4. You do that quick electron count, it should be 18 electron count, and from there on, you have. Um, one of the carbon monoxide is getting out of course, you need a 16 electron so called little bit unsaturation is required and you get to HCO CO 3 this is a 16 electron species. From there on uh, you have the interaction of this alkene to give you HCO CO 3 and quad alkene coordinated intermediate of course, this is going to be the 18 electron species. So, 18 electron goes to 16 electron goes to 18 electron this is the olefin coordination or so called ligand coordination you can say. Now, from there on as you can imagine you have the hydride equivalent and you have the olefin. 
show beta migratory insertion can take place. You should be very very good at these things and understanding uh, that this this is the ensuing step that is going to uh, uh, going to predominate or will take over. So, from 18 electron to of course, you are going to get a 16 electron intermediate with uh, with with uh, with uh, with with the hydride at the alpha beta position that is why it is beta migratory insertion into the olefin and this is of course, is going to be the major product of course, um, this is the one which is going to give you the linear linear aldehyde right. Of course, uh, there is a formation of this other one which is the branch product, but that is going to be the minor one. So, 18 goes to 16, 16 goes to 18, 18 goes to 16. So, ligand dissociation, ligand association or olefin interaction, olefin coordination, beta migratory insertion that is the major step or uh, sorry major product and from there on you can see the alpha migratory insertion. So, the whole alkyl group now will migrate into the carbon monoxide. So, alpha migratory insertion will give you the cobalt species carbonyl acyl intermediate ok, alkyl intermediate. So, one this whole alkyl group has uh, transferred to one of the carbon monoxide of course, the 16 electron species uh, you, you do have uh, the, and then, then uh, from there on this process is occurring from there on what you will see is the interaction of hydrogen. I am not going to write down the steps here, we will we'll, we'll discuss, we'll discuss this in detail little bit and overall you will get the hydroformylation that is the linear product formation. Okay. Um, so, this is very, very important to understand that this is a completely electron withdrawing in or you know electron deficient intermediate. You have three of the carbonyl and one of the acyl unit. So, all the ligands are electron withdrawing and uh, so oxidative addition will be difficult right into the hydrogen. So, what you have seen here is the cobalt complex gives rise to an intermediate which is completely electron deficient as you know for oxidative addition you need to have a very electron rich metal center in this case it is very very electron poor therefore we have given this question mark what is happening in there what will be the mechanism of incorporation of this uh, hydride equivalent into the into this uh, into this molecule to give you the long chain aldehyde okay now now if you if you again uh, look back at this mechanism very carefully and simply you would appreciate that the all the steps involved in this process are very very simple. You start with an 18 electron species of course, have to loosen up little bit loosen up little bit from 18 electron species you give rise you give rise to uh, the 16 electron species and then uh, then olefin coordination occurs to give you the 18 electron species back and then uh, you have the opportunity to uh, do the beta migratory insertion to form the alkyl intermediate metal alkyl intermediate from there on alpha migratory insertion can go on and uh, finally, you get an intermediate which is highly electron deficient, but you have not introduced the hydro hydride equivalent yet or the hydrogen gas did not interact yet. So, therefore, uh, you know from this uh, highly electron deficient intermediate if you have to incorporate hydrogen what would be the mechanism that is the one thing we need to look at it carefully. But nonetheless as you have seen from olefin we, we get the aldehyde uh, it could be either terminal or 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 an internal one so called linear and the and the branched one and uh, for aliphatic case linear product predominate uh, as uh, as you may see later on that for a benzene ring containing one or the uh, no, let us say styrene or vinyl naphthalene cases you will see the branch product will predominate because that intermediate metal alkyl or metal uh, metal uh, intermediate metal alkyl intermediate or uh, uh, that will be stabilized by uh, by the electron withdrawing effect of the benzene ring. In the case of alkyl group you have an electron rich alkyl group therefore, the other product predominates ok. Let us look back, uh, let us look back at that step where hydrogen was reacting, hydrogen was reacting with the 
with, with the with your um, alkyl inter acyl intermediate okay so the last step we are going to discuss the last step so mechanism uh, one the first type of mechanism would be the one where we have the oxidative addition of course that is one of the um, usual suspect we think that there would be an oxidative addition right and that will give rise from 16 electron to 18 electron species and CO, CO3, CO, R from here of course you can get R sorry this is R we are not drawing the R. Um, R C H O and H C O C O 3 that is your catalytic uh, component right 16 electron species you may get. Now the finally another mechanism is mechanism 2 that is the sigma bond metathesis right. So as we are saying that this mechanism will be uh, will be unfavorable because of the fact that this is highly electron deficient intermediate further if you do the um, do the computational chemistry or DFT studies you will find that this is very high energy demanding. So therefore this one um, by by virtue of its electron deficient uh, character and also supported by by the DFT studies or computational studies that this is going to be highly energy demanding. Sigma bond metathesis is I guess the one uh, as you have de as we have seen previously when oxidative addition is not going to be a preferred pathway sigma bond metathesis might will be and in this case it will be the case most likely although direct evidence is lacking you will have this coordination with coordination it is a four centered mechanism it will, pre uh, will occur so that means this one, this one, two, one, two, three and four this four centered mechanism will give rise to the product formation the same product formation you will get. So, 16 electron species goes to 18 electron back to 16 electron ok. <coughs> so, to sum up we have seen uh, the incorporation of carbon monoxide into the olefin two different processes we have seen today one is the Monsanto acetic acid process where from olefin or from propene we have uh, we have oh, we have seen um, the different product formation and uh, for specifically for uh, pro from propene uh, we, we in this case carbonyl uh, equivalent uh, formation we, we have seen the branch product formation and the linear product formation for alkyl linear product is the major one and for this uh, for the last reaction we were trying to debate between the oxidative addition and sigma bond metathesis and we, we kind of concluded that sigma bond metathesis will be the one which will which will perhaps happen basically because of the fact that oxidative addition requires the electron richness of the metal center which is missing in this case of having highly electron withdrawing equivalent and therefore uh, therefore uh, the alternative one that is sigma bond metathesis will predominate or will pick up and give you the product okay with that we will uh, close today's session and uh, I would like you to request uh, to study this, this part more carefully and understand that these are uh, nothing but the discussion of the fundamental steps that we have seen early in earlier cases ok. With that um, see you in the next class. Swayam Prabha, Digital India, Educated India.